Hi, this is Sandy with SDS Digital and the Accords you Coralow. This tips and tricks video number five is a hodgepodge of variety. So diving right in, we'll have a look at the routing of more than one envelope to the same CC output jack, where one envelope is triggered directly from a MIDI channel, while the other uses CV mode jack assignment. So two envelopes can point to the same jack. I have created two distinctly different envelopes, so they'll look very different on the scope. Envelopes 3 and 4. This one, number 3, is configured to be directly triggered by MIDI channel 2, which is what track 3 is sending on. The envelope is then sent to be output on CC jack always, regardless of the CV mode. Jack CC 3 setting in CV mode can still affect the way the envelope plays though, as you'll see shortly. Envelope 4, an ADSR type, has no direct triggers here, so must be started by CV mode in order to play. So in CV mode, CC jack source is set to MIDI channel 3, which is the channel tracks 2 is sending on. The function is envelope 3 plus velocity of tracks 2 notes. Envelope is bipolar, gets reset by each trigger, and at one time speed. Interestingly, the velocity multiplier is set to the jack, so any envelope playing on this jack will follow the last known velocity from tracks 2. So tracks 3 is just a single note because it will loop after 4 steps. This will trigger the diminishing sine wave envelope. Tracks 2, the one providing velocity, is also a single note. But the note effects on that note will cause an echo sending several notes with diminishing velocities. As long as the note effects isn't masked, it will be sometimes by the note effects masking sequence, thus playing just one note. These notes will trigger the ADSR envelope number four. So I'll hit play. Here's Tracks 2's echoed notes. You can see the ADSR envelopes being attenuated by velocities. The big one is the note playing again, but with no echo, as note effects is masked at that point. Unmuting Tracks 3, which is triggering the sine wave envelope, we can see them battling for domination of the CC3 jack. Notice, when the note effects is masked, so no echoes, the velocity is full on, so all of the envelope 4 triggers are also attenuated. The two VCOs are being modulated somewhat by the same jack, as you can hear. More envelopes could be routed to the jack, but those must be direct from the envelope settings, not through CV mode, as there can only be one envelope assigned there. The yellow LED on road 3 indicates the envelope signals. So there is a cool way to modulate a single CC jack with multiple envelopes and different attenuations. As I haven't covered tracks note effects chop very much, I thought I'd give a quick run-through of CHOP and ECHO and the differences. CHOP will cut up a single step in tracks and set the number of times. I've randomized this amount so we can hear how dynamic the first steps are without being chaotic. Looking at 
tracks 1A, you can see the first four notes have note effects, while the latter four not. This randomize, set to chop echo, will offset the number of ratchets per step. There are two chop track letters and two echo track letters, each without and with a curve applied. Now let's arm B. This sequence is the same, well, except different notes, but the chop or ratchet has a curve applied. This makes the ratchet uneven by following the curve rather than being a linear division. As you can hear, it makes quite a difference. Tracks 1C has a note effects echo instead. Here it is. These are very tight echoes though, so sort of act like a chop. There's the note plus five echoes, but at four ticks each. As each step is 24 ticks long, the six notes fit perfectly into each step. With echo, randomize varies a plus minus offset to the echo feed. Because here only MIDI exhibits velocity, it's not noticeable on the VCOs. But if the level falls low enough to no longer be on, then the VCO notes will be skipped entirely. With tracks 1D, the echo is being varied with a curve. very differently with echo because it's accumulative. Unequalized, this would be cubic in nature, which would be almost useless here. So some math was added in the program to make it less sensitive that way. Here's some adjustments. So there's four very different note effects you can try out. And back to A. I've been arming each track's letter to play in the playlist, but one could also have just used the jump to quick box. As such. Setting CC5 and CC6 CV inputs, or the clock out a CV input, there's a couple of functions I haven't mentioned in any video. Play and stop. Play and stop is just like pressing the P or S buttons and responds to the rising edge of the input. They require a good 3 volts though to be triggered. I have play and stop patched to these two RITEMS CV outputs so we can see the threshold. Consider each as latching on the rising edge. If play is set low, then high again, this will set a restart play, just like the P button does. And stopping. Stop is more immediate as it doesn't have to align to anything. I'll re-trigger play by adjusting the knob below the threshold, then back up again.
had thought of putting in a condition that if play CV is held high for greater than one measure or a certain amount of time, then brought low again, it does a stop. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Using a CV input to pitch bend can be useful as well. One could create a custom vibrato or warble, or even an octave toggling if your synth can do pitch bends of 12 semis. If not, then just setting it to 12 semitones will bend the VCOs that far. So here's pitch bending. Zero volts is centered, so to bend down you'll need a negative going swing in voltage. The Ritem is set to be unipolar right now, so we'll only go up. This onboard envelope goes into the minus territory. So does this one. While on the topic of CV pitch controlling, making use of the learn function to modify a track's transpose parameter is almost like a pitch bend, but with more range, plus or minus 48 semitones over the plus and minus 5 volt range. This isn't one volt per octave and wasn't meant to be, but can yield predictable results all the same. The cool thing about this transpose is it's not locked to bars like the master transpose is when adjusting from the panel. Plus it's faster, even under CV control. So with a glide applied to the CV mode jack, as is in this case, really closely mimics a giant pitch bend to the untrained ear. This envelope is being triggered by internal beats, so the transpose repeats itself with the waveform. An envelope too, which is entirely different, but still triggered in sync this time on every beat. Each note in the track sequence is offset by a different part of the envelope waveform, but it only lasts one clock before getting reset. Even though the envelopes are being triggered directly from the envelope settings, the CC jack settings still bear true, like decreasing the voltage range, which attenuates it here. Bipolar switch zeroes any negative side of the waveform. An envelope rate multiplier still affects the envelope, or envelopes, presented to this CC jack. If reset envelope is turned off in CV mode, then the entire envelope must play before being able to be triggered again. So a long rotation could be achieved this way, like with envelope one, or a free running envelope. When the track's QB is selected, any remote parameter modifications to that dropdown are paused at the last value until this is exited. I'll switch the CV learn function over to the master transpose. You can see it's still pretty fast, but not free running like the tracks or layer transposes are.
So I've changed the CV transpose over to tracks too, and I'm setting the two notes there to have long echoes. This is to demonstrate how the echoes are made from the note as it was when stepped into. So the echo remains all that note that it was captured at. This can be interesting though with long echoes overlapping new notes, which also echo. Like a constantly changing poly sequence of overlapping notes. Not exactly the result I was expecting. On to the LFO. So the point of this is the echoes aren't affected by the transpose after they have been initiated and keep echoing on that same note. Adding micro arp would make it interesting. Over the whole range transpose is quite a bit of change, but if you just wanted to have control of three or four transpositions, the scale parameter might better suit the purpose. The four user scales have been set to root D, E, F, and G. These are all minor triads. The red scale blocks are the root for each. The last two have to wrap around, but the root note is what's important. I'll use a track scale, but this could be also song effect scale to affect every sequence running. Let's scale tracks one. Muting tracks two will clear things up. So it's learned in. The voltage must be greater than 2.8 volts to access the user scales as the five lower ones are no scale, followed by the four presets, major, minor, major seventh, and minor seventh. Then the four user scales follow. This is like uh, nine different things over a zero to five volt range. Of course, this depends on which notes are playing into the scale quantizer in the first place. So I hope this tips and tricks video was interesting enough. I guess it was or you wouldn't still be watching to this point, right? Don't forget to comment on the play held high then low to stop thingy, yay or nay. I'm Sandy Sims. Thanks for watching. <laughs>